welcome to my channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review and today I have another head-to-head -head between two pen BBS pens in Niangao this past Sunday was the first Sunday in a month that I was able to sleep in for the last month I'd been setting my alarm for 6 7 8 and 9 a.m. just to catch when Viney the shopkeeper for pen BBS on Etsy would drop the new finishes for my favorite pen BBS model the 456 vacuum filler well a week last Sunday they dropped and the feeding frenzy began there were some fascinating new finishes including these two-tone finishes this checkerboard pattern called hidden path and of course this galaxy 456 the one I've been waiting for and the one I've been losing sleep over for more than a year I was good and I controlled myself even when a 456 in the finished Kun showed up and there were only four available they sold in under a minute of course I only purchased the galaxy and hope to have it within a month but then while I was happily sleeping last Sunday morning binding was at it again dropping yet another rare finish 456 onto the Etsy shelves and that finish is the rare and beloved Niangao when I saw that and the excitement it drew from pen BBS lovers I just smiled to myself because I already have it and here it is and how did I get it so quickly well as much as I'd like to say that Biney sends me a free pen every time there is a new finish wink wink nudge nudge snap snap green green wink wink nudge nudge say no more are you listening Biney if you are I can get you on the stage I can get you on the stage oh hi Return right here to the corridor and go past the fireplace. I don't like yours. I received this beautiful 456 Niango, which is from the first batch of 456 Niango released almost two years ago. And I got it from my terrific pen friend and proprietor of Bauer Inks in Toronto, Ms. Claudia Astrakiza. And as part of the previous feeding frenzy surrounding the release of the improved model 355 bulk filler last April, I got this Niango 355 as well. So let's take a look at both of these rare cats and see which one is better right now. And this other special finish. Now that I know that the first one was an amber. yeah I was crying too about my pens oh mom this is the Niango his car ran out of batteries he's been driving it around the backyard so his little toy car this is Niango and I'll show this with my 456 as well that I got as a gift but as you can tell it's not quite as transparent fairly opaque so more difficult to see the ink usually I go over the parts and features of a pen show some size comparisons provide some measurements and then do a writing sample but since this is a head-to-head -head of the two pen models I have reviewed extensively before I'm going to do some comparison of these two models and look at the similarities and differences and try to determine which of the two I prefer I'll also be providing writing samples from both pens so let's talk about the Niangao finish first it is a relatively rare cracked ice style finish from pen BBS as I said in the introduction I received this Niangao 156 vacuum filler from Claudia who got a couple of them when they were first introduced almost two years ago and with this improved version 355 I picked up last April we can see examples of what might be considered the first batch of Niango with the second batch of Niango the uh, 456 being the first batch from a couple of years ago and this 355 being the most recent my camera video might not pick this up uh, let's see if I can do that here but if you look carefully you can see that the 456 here has a little bit warmer rosier kind of a glow uh, than the 355 and the 355 is more of a gray taupey kind of a look it's visible to my eye anyway 
and that seems to be borne out by the photo that Biney did of a bunch of the new batch 456s all lined up. You'll see from this photo how your particular pen might be a variation on light top, dark bottom, uh, or vice versa, or light middle, dark top and bottom, or vice versa, depending on the luck of the draw. This old batch 456 is light on top and dark on the bottom, whereas this new batch 355 is light in the middle and dark on the top and the bottom. Again, regardless of what you receive, the cracked ice style of the resin is hugely chatoyant, actually semi-translucent in places, which helps with both the bulk filler and the vacuum filler styles uh, in seeing your ink levels. The Niangao is one of the Pen BBS Is a Cat series, which includes Amber is a Cat, like in this, Amber is a Cat 456, Tootsie is a Cat, like in this Tootsie 323, and of course, our Niango is a Cat. So my collector goal is to have a 456 in each of the cat finishes in Niango, Amber, and in Tootsie. I'll just have to be vigilant about finding a Tootsie. If you follow Biney on Instagram, you'll see plenty of photos of Amber and Niango, the cats, roaming about her apartment and helping her pack up shipments of pens. But I've never seen Tootsie, the cat, anywhere. Niangao is actually a Chinese New Year cake made from sweet sticky rice. And Nian Gao is a Chinese homonym sounding just like higher year. So for the Chinese, it is lucky to eat at New Year's as it is supposed to symbolize being better or raising yourself higher in the new year. I'm sure that's something we all wish for for 2021. The Chinese New Year this year is February 12th, 2021. Let's look at these two pens side by each, as my friends in Quebec say. I sing that pen when uh, the puck come down, bang, you know, before the other guys, mm -hmm. nobody there, you know. Mm -hmm. My arm go comes out, then uh, the game stop, then start up. The guy take the stick, you know, and he go like that, sir. Why not? Against the rules. You know, you're stupid when you do that. Just some English pig with no I brain at so. all, you know. Slashing is um, like that, you know. <laughs> I think that went very well. And let's switch to camera number two. So here we are on camera number two. And with full disclosure, it's just actually camera number one in a different mount. The 355 here is a much more traditional flat top, Aim for the flat top. style pen where the 456 is more tapered and slender. The top finial on the 456 has a two-step taper and a slight dome on the top, where the 355 is much more traditional with the flat top. The bottom piston knobs are also quite different, with the 456 knob having a tail-like taper and the 355 again a more traditional design. The cap bands are also similar but they have different engravings and the clips are the identical sword clips on each. The barrels on both pens are different with the 355 being thicker over its length because the 456 tapers off dramatically. This is how the 456 is actually capable of posting so much better than the 355. And you see here how the posted lengths are dramatically different. Unposted, they are almost the same length. And the 456 has metal cap threads on the top of the barrel where the 355 is all acrylic. Accordingly, actually this is a weak spot for the 456 because that added chunk of metal weight right here makes it susceptible to breakage. I know this from personal experience having dropped my 456 clear glass from a very short distance onto a carpeted floor and it snapped right there. You'll also notice that the 456 has a larger band separating the, uh, the piston knob uh, from the barrel than the 355 has. Now let's close up on the sections. PenBBS not only offers a wide variety of different models of fountain pens, 
but almost every model has a unique section shape. I'm thinking of actually doing a video examining just the variety of pen BBS sections available. Most of the differences are subtle. This again shows that pen BBS is managed by fountain pen enthusiasts. Subtle differences in sections give slightly different experiences. And between the 456 and the 355, we see two classic styles. The concave hourglass style of the 456 and the tapering barrel with a flare at the end style of the 355. They're both very comfortable to me as these threads and the steps involved here are very smooth and unobtrusive. I prefer the smooth hourglass shape of the 456 over the taper and flare of the 355, but the differences, as I said, are very subtle. Here we see, or would see, another subtle difference uh, between the models, the nibs. However, the 355 I ordered had a medium nib instead of the fine which I then swapped with a regular fine nib from a nib charm. So let me substitute uh, this 355 for my original 355 in Aurora. The 456 is silver with gold highlights, where the 355 is gold with silver highlights. I thought that the 355 and the 456 were the only places where you'll see these two styles of two-tone nibs from Pen BBS, but someone mentioned they were on another model, but I forget which. In the hand and unposted, both models are extremely well balanced and comfortable. The 355 is slightly chunkier in the hand, as you would expect, because the barrel back here doesn't taper as much. But when you post the 456, the 456 is also extremely comfortable and well balanced, but the 355 posted becomes very back heavy and a little bit too long, well, much too long for me to actually write with. So even though the cap goes on the barrel of the 355, I cannot write with it in this fashion. And on to the filling systems. They both take a large capacity of ink and although the filling systems are similar, I think the 456 is superior because of its simplicity. Unscrew the blind cap, pull the rod back, stick the nib in the ink, and push the rod back down. Wait a couple of seconds, and then close the cap, and you're done. If you want an absolutely full fill, then just repeat that procedure. Pulling up the piston rod, pushing it back down into the ink, getting rid of all the air, and then closing it down. The 355, on the other hand, you unscrew the blind cap, stick your nib into the ink, pull the rod back, and keep turning the rod to engage the piston, then push the piston down, pull it back up to syringe up some ink, and then you have to turn the cap in the opposite direction as if you're closing it and push the rod back in while keeping the nib in the ink and then closing the blind cap down. Even though this improved version is a big improvement over the old 355 system, it is still one added step that the vacuum filler in the 456 does not have. This Niango 355 version is no longer available but I paid $45.99 US for this one. The 456 vacuum filler Niango is still available as of this writing and is $41.99 US. I doubt they will last long as there are only 17 of them and 20 people have them in their baskets. After these special finishes like Niango, Amber, Galaxy, Tutsi, and Hidden Path, among others, disappear from the official Etsy store, you can usually find some of them for sale on eBay at inflated prices, sometimes more than 50% more. Now let's look at some comparison measurements and I'll be back with writing samples for both pens. We're back with 
with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and I'll write with both the 355 and the 456. I've written with the 456 for about eight months now but this is the first time for the 355. But I have to say before I start writing that I inked both these pens with what I thought was a nice matching ink and this is Robert Oster Muddy Wine. But it ended up being way too light to really see the performance of the new 355. So I cleaned out both pens and replaced the ink with Iroshizuku Takasume. This is a lovely dark charcoal gray ink and is silky smooth and very well behaved. And here it is with some J. Urban Stormy Gray and some Hero Black. So we'll begin with the Pen BBS. 355 the Angao improved version with a fine steel mini food a nib and let's check the wetness this pen is nicely wet when I first wrote with it uh, with the muddy wine ink it behaved in a very typical pen BBS fine nib fashion which is quite dry but smooth I never touched this nib with micro mesh or adjusted the flow by flossing it I simply and carefully pressed the nib down seven times um, very carefully so I didn't uh, spring the nib uh, but I pressed it down seven times to open up uh, those times now I know others will press the nib against their thumbnail like that uh, but I mean that works but I like the control of the page uh, so that you know I mean I'd hate to slip on here and either give myself an instant tattoo or break the nib Points a lot finer than I prefer. That's because it's a hypodermic needle, what? and the cartridge is full of a deadly super toxin called poisocaine. Uh, here. Hey, whoa! Keep it in here. Wait a minute. But be careful. The cap slips off for like no reason. And this nib is now glorious. It is wet and capitals smooth. Just last week, I reviewed my Galaxy 355, uh, which I gave the same seven-stroke treatment to. And that this pen here shot to the top of my best nibs in my collection list. Well, these two nibs are almost identical. There's no point in looking at line variation on this nib because it's typical pen BBS Chinese steel. Uh, very, very stiff. Comparing this line to my Richard Binder chart, it comes out at 0.5 millimeters, which is what I expected. And it is a Western. Fine. Or a Japanese. fine to medium and a quote and some reverse writing very scratchy very dry and some quick writing absolutely no issues whatsoever now let's look at the 456 so this is the pen BBS 456 Niangao and it is a fine steel mini food eh? 
nib. And of course, the ink is still Hiroshizuku uh, Takasume. Let's do a quote. As to wetness, this pen is about the same wetness, but the line is just slightly finer than the uh, 355, but it feels just slightly sharper. Not scratchy, but just a little sharper than the 355. An interesting, subtle difference, but it writes beautifully smooth and wet. And reverse writing, not so much and quick writing. Again, no issues. So this pen is much more comfortable in the hand for me than the 355 model is, which leaves me with a bit of a quandary. I like the way the nib on the 355 writes uh, better than the 456, but I like the 456 model in my hand better. Now, being Pen BBS, of course, I could just swap the nib units out. They unscrew and replace very easily. But my inquiring mind wants to know, can I swap full sections? Well, let's find out, shall we? Yes, I'm doing this live on camera. Okay, now since we're white guys doing something stupid, everybody grab a GoPro. Just keep them upright, Doug, and we won't have an accident. What do you know? And it works. So here I have my 456 with the section of a 355. And a 355 with the section of a 456. Et voila, c'est tout. C'est magnifique. Now I do actually like the section of the 456 better than the 356. So if it's just the nib that I wanted to swap, I could swap out those uh, uh, nib units uh, fairly easily. And I might do that actually after this video. Uh, this is why I snap up these little nib charms for $5 a pop whenever I make an order with PenBBS on Etsy. I now have three of the best nibs of Pen BBS. I have this one on my Niangao. I have this one on my Galaxy 355. And I have this one on my Moonman M800. Of my 25 some odd uh, pen BBS nibs these are the best and I think I'm going to even rank them like this that that 355 Galaxy is certainly the best and this is really really close to it next and that was on the 355 which I swapped over to the 456 and the Moon Man would come in now at uh, number three so what shall I call this now uh, my Frank and the Angle 456. That's what I'll call it. <laughs> so, what do I like and not like about these fountain pens? It's no secret that I love both these pens. In a head to head competition between the 456 model and the 355 improved version, um, regardless of finish, I prefer the 456. 
The 456 is now pretty firmly entrenched for me as the finest filling system model that Penn BBS offers. It is robust and substantial in the hand and yet extremely well balanced both posted and unposted. I love the hourglass section and the filling system uh, on the vacuum filler is easy to use. The shutoff valve is handy to prevent the pen from burping because you had it sitting in your thigh pocket for too long, nibbed down. Who told me so? If anybody boards of it, he's going to piss all over himself. And for a vacuum filler, it is reasonably priced even for the premium finishes like this Niangao. I do like the improved 355 but it's added fussiness surrounding the filling system and the lack of a balanced cap posting give it a second place standing for me. I know I shouldn't have bought so many 355s when I got caught up in the feeding frenzy last April but they make excellent pairs these Niangaos and uh, these Ambers. Next month when my Grail Pen BBS arrives the Galaxy 456 I will have three pairs of the best Pen BBS acrylics in three beautiful sets of 355 and 456. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.